Okay, so it's no coincidence I just did that video on challenge lock picking advice because it rode right on the heels of another question that I don't think I'm very qualified to answer. And that is, how do you make a challenging challenge lock? I've made very few. I wouldn't say they're all that challenging. There, a couple are, a couple aren't. Um, so I'm not the person to answer this question. But I think it's perhaps an interesting enough topic for somebody else to cover. Um, I will say, I think, I'll say a few words. <laughs> I think you kind of have two, not quite camps, but two different takes on the concept of challenge locks. You have, um, it should be difficult to open and it should be fun. And I think what you kind of do is you take from one and you give to the other category. So you can take a lot of the fun away and make a really hard lock to open, or you can take a lot of the hardness away and make an incredibly fun lock to open. Um, and challenge lock building in general is you're just kind of trying to mix and match that up in a way that's not just going to be absolutely impossible. Um, I think if your only goal is to just make the quickest, easiest, most difficult to pick lock, it, my gut instinct says serrate all the pins, serrate all the chambers, and triple the springs. Um, I, I wouldn't even do high and low cuts on it, like for the key. I think I would just do mostly highs and mediums. Um, you know, just have all the drivers sitting well in their chambers, everything serrated, and triple the springs, quadruple the springs. Um, and I think it's just going to be miserable. But I don't think it'd be very fun. Um, but you know, like, in fun is a little subjective. I mean, like, I, I often highlight asymmetric Oreo. I think that was a really neat lock just because you could get a different picking experience out of it every time. Fast Charlie did one called Not Quite, which if you just like the feeling of pins going up and down and the sounds of a lock, that lock could provide you hours of entertainment. Um, once you kind of had its number, it was up. But yeah, if you just liked moving pins around in a lock, that thing could go on forever for you. Um, so I know it's not much of an answer, but <clears throat> the key part in doing this video is I wanted to put this out there because this comes up a lot to me. And I think for you guys that are building challenge locks, I think there's a lot of interest in it. Um, and I think a lot of people, I think lock picking attracts a certain do it yourself kind of mentality. And a lot of people are interested in doing work themselves. Uh, and even though they may not have at the time the experience or the tools, you know, that can kind of come later. But I would say I'd put it out there to you to start documenting some of these builds. I think there's a lot of room to talk about in your challenge locks and how you're making them and maybe why you're making them the way you are. You know, how much thought are you putting into it? Um, you know, what you're hoping is going to be the interaction between the shear line and the pins. Um, you know, I think there's just a lot of things to kind of ramble on about or to point out. Uh, I know some building stuff, it can be a little, it can run long maybe. You've got a grinder running so you can't really talk over it. You don't think it's going to be all that entertaining. But I think there's a strong audience out there that wants to watch it. Um, and when I say a strong audience, I don't know if I mean by sheer numbers. Uh, maybe some of your lesser viewed videos, but I think those that do watch it uh, are going to definitely be inspired and take a lot away from it because um, there's a lot of experience out there and you know especially you know I mean, even just e not everyone has access to a lathe um, so that brings interest into doing stuff like Alex is doing with just hand tools where you know they're doing incredibly complicated intricate work with just basic tools but even as far as having more advanced machinery goes there's a lot that goes into that as just far as getting it set up and running to do some of this stuff. Um, so that's what I'm going to put out there. I think there's an audience for it. Um, it may not be the best entertaining video, but I think people are looking for it. Um, I know there's some stuff on shaping pins, you know, have them in a Dremel, have them in a drill, and kind of spin around and show how you basically do things. But I think there's a lot more room um, for videos, 
and for just some general kind of, here's my theory thinking behind it, here's how I tend to do this, here's why I'm doing it, I think there's room for that. Um, and I think that would be a really interesting area to see kind of an expansion of um, videos and tutorials and other information on. Um, there's a lot of picking videos. We've got a fair number of videos on making picks. I think there's still room in there. Um, but yeah, when it comes to challenge lock building, some bits and pieces are here and there, but not a whole lot. So I would almost challenge you to uh, start documenting some of this stuff and looking at it, if you can, um, and putting it out there. I uh, think people will be interested in it. So, all right, guys, you have a good one. I'm going to get back to picking some locks after I finish this flat mocha.